right, next one, 12. Okay. Um, so from low power, there's ecanthosis, uh, hyperkeratosis, and there's kind of like a little papule in the middle. Uh -huh. um, and you could see kind of intrapidermal uh, like ecantholysis. Yep. Um, and it kind of has these uh, papillary fronds projecting from the basal layer mm -hmm. into the space. Um, you certainly can also see discurrotic cells, uh, like bradyosinophilic uh, corons. Yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, if it was just more invaginated, I would call it a tiny little warty D. Um, in this case, if it is like an isolated single lesion, um, so you can call it like uh, a cantholytic dyskeratoma. Yes, the, this is another one of those where it, the pattern is acantholysis and dyskeratosis, right? We've got the cells falling apart, and when they get acantholytic, they, they are not stretched out, hooked up to their neighbor keratinocytes, so their cell sticks together, it kind of bulges, uh, crunches up next to the nucleus, and that makes it look a lot more dense pink because the keratin filaments, instead of being stretched out like they are here, they're all bulged up around the nucleus, so it has this very dense pink look. So that's one way that helps you to tell that, yes, what you're dealing with is acantholysis. Um, and then you get to see them starting to turn into dying cells and dyskeratosis, so corons and grains. And if this is a single incidental lesion that you just happen to see in the background, say, on a melanoma excision, you could say it's focal acantholytic dyskeratosis. If it's a lesion that was bigger and was biopsied clinically because they thought it was maybe a SEB, you could call it an acantholytic dyskeratotic acanthoma, a solitary kind of flat lesion or, or you know, you know, kind of acanthotic lesion um, that was, you know, the intent of the biopsy. If it was multiple itchy bumps on the trunk, then you could call it Grover's disease. And if it was an endophytic kind of invaginated lesion, you could call it warty dyskeratoma. All of these are benign processes that involve acantholysis and dyskeratosis. The difference is really clinical and um, and what you uh, what name you want to apply to it. So there's not a not a real significant difference here. The main thing, of course, is that if you is the one thing that would be more problematic is Derrière's disease, which you would have you know large plaques of this clinically would be very different. But the same pattern, you can have this exact pattern if this were a biopsy from Derrière disease. This would look uh, just like this, only usually more multifocal, but on a small biopsy, unless you were told the clinical, you might not be able to tell that. So, exactly. I think this one's labeled as a focal acantholytic uh, dyskeratosis, although to me it's big enough that I, I would probably, if they had a solitary lesion, which is what it looked like they were biopsying here, I would probably call it um, acantholytic dyskeratotic acanthoma, just like you said, unless they had multiple bumps, and then I'd call it Grover's. So, um, so that's a good pattern to learn because you can get multiple diseases for the, the price of one.